Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to discuss mobilizing your chi. And what does that mean? This is something that, you know, if you get the idea like, oh, mobilize my chi, how do you how do you do it? How do you get, how do you make that happen? What What's involved with that? And so this is something that, you know, I remember coming across it in one of uh, Cheng Man Ching's books, you know, where he talks about first mobilize your chi, then act or then do. So, you know, the, it's an important point kind of is something that is, um, has informed a lot of what I've been researching lately. And I kind of peel it back a layer because to mobilize the chi, um, it, it's a kind of a high, high bar for a lot of people. And uh, it's something that I think if we break it down, we can actually see how this is, um, uh, is, is, is an attainable goal. And not only that, but it's something that is highly recommended for whatever you're doing, not just your, your Kung Fu, but, but anything in life. So the, the key to mobilizing your chi is first to feel the energy, to be able to have enough energy available so that you can move it. Because mobilize means to, like uh, to mobilize the troops means to provide the resources necessary for the troops to be able to go and do what troops do. Same thing with, you know, mobilizing anything. It's like you are handling the, the, the necessary steps in order to make something happen. So uh, it also implies that there's, to mobilize something, there's, it's something that you do. It's not just something that happens, it's something that you do. It's, it's an, there's an activity involved, there's an action involved, there's an intention, and it's not something you just wait and let it happen to you. So the, uh, to mobilize your chi, first we need to get enough chi together to make a difference. And all of us are animated by chi or energy, but just by the very fact of being alive. So that's, that's a big plus point in our, in our favor. But the, uh, uh, to mobilize it means that we're going to do something with that energy. We're going to use the energy in a way that is directed, it's intentional, it's volitional. So we, so the first step is, I think, to make sure that you get enough chi. So the, uh, like I say, there's it, just by being alive, you have a lot of chi. There's there's just enough, just enough to be able to, to get your seventy trillion cells operating and functioning together. It requires a whole lot of energy. But once you get out of the the barca lounger, uh, then you have to. Uh, it takes a little more energy to do that, and um, so the. I think that the, the the tools necessary to first of, first of all establish that high level of energy that takes us above mere maintenance and into something a bit more. Uh, we, I think the the three pillars that I've been talking about for for these many weeks, and we we've, we've done so often, what they do they allow you to make the necessary connections to open to the big chi so you're no longer just operating with the limited capacity of your body mind you are plugged into something much bigger and to the degree that you are able to access the three pillars efficiently and quickly you are able to then bring more energy into play, way more than you would expect in your normal day-to-day -day affairs. 
So we get that, we establish the three pillars. And, and so suddenly there's, we have access to more. How much more? How much can you tolerate? It's really, it, it really as simple as that. It's your body mind can only handle a certain amount, but it can be trained to take in more, be able to use more. So the, uh, your capacity is something that you can control how much you do. And that is the basic idea behind Gong Fu. That is diligent practice over time. You do something over and over again, and you do it intentionally, you do it volitionally, you really uh, bring your whole being to the event, and then you're able to get a whole lot more out of it. So once you've established a certain amount of energy, say, let's say your cup is full, you're kind of, you're spilling over, you've got so much energy. Now what? So the, uh, and this is where I get into something which I, is guiding a lot of what I have been talking about lately, and that is feel first, then do. That is, you are consciously, intentionally feeling into your body so that you're activating neural connections, which have been, for the most part, asleep most of your life. The, um, so the, um, by bringing your conscious awareness to your feeling, the feeling, not your feelings, your emotions, but the actual internal, uh, quality of feeling, then you change your internal architecture, you change your, your nervous system, you create new neural connections, and you open up chunks of your brain that have been asleep. We move into a super conscious state. And um, so the, uh, the ability to just consciously feel into your body mind something we've explored many times here, and we're not gonna do it again right now, but the ability to consciously feel then allows us to consciously do. And these are two very separate parts of the nervous system. The feeling part is what's called the afferent neural network or the sensory neural network. And that's where information is going from your five senses into your central nervous system. And there, there it gets processed and you say, oh, that smells like, sulfur or that whatever that the uh, your you your conscious mind can then evaluate that information although a very tiny part of that of your sense data actually gets the attention of your conscious mind your efferent neural network that is your motor neural network takes commands from your central nervous system and tells your muscles to contract and that's what they do so if you want to lift your arm, you get to feel. Ah, you feel the motion of the liftings, that's sensory, but there's also a, a motor part there, which is you're consciously actively doing that. And you're doing it. And when you do that, you are changing your nervous system around where you're taking step which would ordinarily be happening at a pre-conscious or unconscious level and you're making them conscious so i've read that you know up to 95 percent of human behavior is unconscious that is it's happening just uh out of pattern behavior and the very very tiny part of it is volitional so what we're doing in our kung fu is changing that equation just a little bit. We just, if we take that 95 and we reduce it down to 90, 85, 80, unconscious, then we can start to change, dramatically change the way we live. 
we are awake. That is, we are, have reclaimed parts of our nervous system which have been asleep. So this is where you know they talk about in the in the uh, Yang family secret transmissions. They talk about that that martial arts and spiritual awakening are the same thing. They are they are two aspects of the same thing, and the key to getting there is this conscious feeling and doing. And that's because you are awakening your body mind so that you can do this cool stuff. So, so the second step, the first step is first of all, get, get the chi. And we do that, you know, we establish that through our three pillars. The second is very diligently, consciously feeling and doing. And this is a gradual process of, of learning how how to make that part of your life. And the third part is to be able to transmute chi or energy into jin. And jin is where we are consciously expressing energy through the body mind intentionally so as to create an effect. And so by doing those first two steps, then we create the, uh, the, a nurturing environment for that expression of jinn. And whenever we are able to utilize jinn rather than that crude muscular force, then we're doing taiji, taiji tran the way it's designed to be done. So it's uh, real easy to kind of get overwhelmed by the, the long view of this and kind of retreat back into just doing the minimum. But the, the beauty of, of this particular practice is that it gives you rewards each step of the way if you are alert to them. Each time that you do something, you have that opportunity to say, oh, that's new. And you get to feel into something that you had never felt before. So last week, uh, I talked a little bit about how this month we are uh, into the liver gallbladder chi, that is, and the, the pattern is it comes up the left and circles down and goes down the right. And this is an important uh, element to feed the system. It's, a, it's going from yin to yang. And so it, it's a, it has a capacity to open us, to expand, to reach out. It also has a, a little bit of an edge to it. You know, I think I mentioned, you know, a happy anger involved with this. Like, you know, you're, you're getting excited about the moment. And so it's rather than just sort of a, a passive retreating into stillness, it's going from stillness into motion. And it's that, that edge that requires to, enough to break through. So we're going to do something. We're going to play around with this. And how we're going to practice feeling into that feel first, then do. And we'll do some simple stuff. Start off with the three pillars, and then we'll move into some other, other stuff that allows us to explore this a little more. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, Scott, you got something? Correct. I, I did, didn't hear that. Liver's on the right, correct? Your liver? Liver's on the right, yes. Okay, and then the energy goes from? Goes up the left, up the left, the, uh, the liver and gallbladder are both on the right. So, right. But the the liver function uh, is it's uh, it comes up the left side, and the gallbladder function goes down the right. So because the liver is um, it's um, a uh, it's yin, and so consequently it rises, and the gallbladder is uh, is the yang aspect of the wood chi, so it goes down. And don't ask me 
why it's up the left and down the right, because I don't know. Somebody a lot smarter than me figured it out a long, long time ago. And uh, they mapped it out and said, this is how it is, Rick. <laughs> and uh, so I said, OK. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, ultimately, I don't know that it matters. But it, it's good to have that. Kind of, you're kind of in sync with the tradition when you do it that way. And if you want to bring your liver up the right and gallbladder down the left, I'm not going to tell anybody. So you, but, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, I think you know, this is what Master Yang told me. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't lie to me. So I'll, uh, I'll take it that somebody thinks this is a good idea. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way. Okay? Also, um, Kim, Kim had something. Yeah, he put something in the chat. Kim's comment. Kim, I've experienced more chi, but I think it's been resulting more tension and headaches. Okay, so uh, you want to talk about that, Kim? Kim, you're, you're on mute, though. You have to you have to unmute. You're still on. You're still on mute. Here we go. Uh, it, it's just um, I, I'm 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 feeling the chi coming down, but uh, it doesn't come all the way down, and I think it like stays here, and I tend to tense up. Uh, I I'm 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 not sure you know if that's the explanation, but it seems to me what what's happening to me. Okay, and so. The quick and dirty answer that I would have to that would be that usually it's the hose is kinked somewhere, yeah. either at the jade pillow gate, which causes the chi to get stuck in the head, or in the uh, in the qua, you know, in the hip joints, uh -huh. which then allow, uh, doesn't allow the energy to go all the way down to the feet and ground through the feet. So the yang chi wants to go from the head on down through the body and out the feet. And uh, if the hips are locked up, then that doesn't uh, that doesn't happen. They get they get stuck there, and so the chi rattles around in your head. The other place is at the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. Okay, and if the chin is up at all, you know it. If there's as it, we have a tendency to to lock up the shoulders and the neck whenever we get tense. And so uh, by reaching with the crown of the head, tucking in the chin, we open the jade pillow gate and that allows for more flow of the energy. Does any of that sound helpful? Yeah, I, I just, uh... okay, so. So the solution is, is just the position of the head? That's, that's one of the places. So let's say if, particularly when I used to wear glasses, you know, I would, I would be like this so I could focus out of my glasses and my chin would jut forward and my, and my shoulders were rounded. And so what would happen is then there'd be a kink in the hose there at the base of the skull. And I would get tension headaches out of that. And whenever I changed that, so that I was reaching to the top of my head, tucking my chin and looking straight ahead, then by opening that up, the headaches went away for me. So that was, that was my solution to that particular problem. It was like, oh, I'm... Muscular tension in my neck was causing me to get tension headaches. Once that, once I clear, cleared that up, no more. And this was, you know, 25 years ago or so. Oh. Uh, well, I have, to, I have to keep trying it at that. I, I... So if you, if you turn, turn to the side and just let me see you in profile. 
Uh, you have to turn your whole body so you can. Uh, I just want to see where your where your, where your head looks like. Okay, so turn and uh, profile so that you're sideways. I, I actually can't see it from here. Okay, well we'll have to do it. We'll have to do this uh, one on one. Yeah. So I can uh, I can help out there. But anyway, just try that. The other thing is at the hip joints. So we're talking about the three pillars now. The third pillar is unkink the hose. That is. So notice your head right now. Notice where your chin is and your and the uh, uh, and the the neck is how it's that's that's pinched there. If you do that over time, your the headaches for me were just my body saying, "Dude, you're doing something wrong." You know, and clean that. When I cleaned that up, things got better. Uh, okay. So, um, if you're feeling a lot of chi, but the chi is is stuck, if it's running into a stagnation, then you're gonna you're gonna feel that your body's gonna tell you, you know, that hey, stagnant right here, wherever I'm feeling, where I'm feeling the pain, that's that's where I'm stagnant. Wow. So that's uh, and then you can you can develop a strategy to to handle that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah. Good. I hope some of that makes sense. It sure does. Yeah. Good. Keith. Makes a lot of sense. And I got to tell you just for uh, poops and giggles, every time I'm on this call, when I see Valerie looking at me or I see you looking at me, the first thing I do is make sure I'm maintaining positive posture. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> she knows because she'd see me go stand up straight <laughs> but i gotta tell you that's good so my question is uh you know i have a lot of naturally born chi all right keeps me up many hours of the night how do I focus this shit to the right parts of my body so I can call upon it when I want it? So it's not calling upon me in the middle of the night to go out and paint for two or three hours. That's a, that's an important question. And that's uh, um, Oh, you're the wizard. The, the broad answer is to, to get your three pillars engaged, you know, most of the day so that uh, you're allowing the energy to move through you, not get stuck in, in there and rattle around. So if you're, if you're, you know, you're having a lot of chi in your head, then it's just, it's the same thing that I was talking to Kim about, you know, it's rattling around it. That's yang chi. Yang chi is, is the expansive do, do, do part. Right. And it, if that is dominating your brain, then you're going to have that, that thing until you just flat out, you know, you quit and it's like you, you, you uh, collapse uh, out of exhaustion and then you get up and you do it again and it becomes addictive. So the, the thing is to actually learn to feel the earth more with your feet. So you're opening up the channels, the earth connection, because then yin chi, which is yin, the earth chi, is, which is yin, it ascends and uh, it has a, a calming effect on the body. And the yang chi also exits through the through the uh, through the bubbling well points in the feet, and so you start to tip the scales. So that you're getting more and more balanced in your in your energy. So learning to make friends with the yin, but also like you know, I mean, like right now, just look at your head, Keith, and just notice how the the chin juts forward. There you go. So it you're quite capable of doing that, <laughs> you know, a, you know, most of the day. But you know, if you're spending most of the day like this, then you're gonna it's you know the, the body mind acclimates to that so and i really try not to and i try to like over accentuate by when i'm standing up actually even leaning back a little bit 
So I'm not reaching, I'm not doing the, you know, crouching uh, gooseneck thing. But yeah, it's a... Uh, Leaning backwards, uh, not the key. Reaching well, up to the crown. So No, and you're right. But I'm just talking about when I'm just like out and about, and I feel myself craning forward. I'll like instinctively start try to reach back as well as reaching up. But just look just, at yourself. Look at yourself whenever you do that. It's like, it's a different person. It is. It's a different person. And, and that's, that's people that, that, help. And it's making friends with the yin. Yeah. You know what? And I've had people fucking tell me that. Excuse my language. I apologize for that. But I've had people tell me, it's like, what's going on? When I'm just standing right and it's just like I'm in the chi. It's only been a year, but this is badass if I can use technical terms. It is badass. I believe that's I believe that's the, the appropriate Taiji term for that. So <laughs> so why don't we get up and do some badass stuff? Nothing. Okay, so let's uh, let's get our three pillars in. We want to start with that. First of all, plugging into the big G and getting coherent. And then uh, releasing the impediments to the chi flow by unkinking the hose. So feel the balls of your feet. Unlock the knees. Allow your weight to settle over the balls of the feet. Still spreading it throughout the foot. You're still feeling the heel on the floor. You're feeling the toes pressing down. But it's the, there's no tension in the foot. It's very relaxed. It's kind of spreading out. And you're feeling through the foot and into the earth. Now reach with the crown of the head. And tuck in the chin. So you're pulling up with the with the crown. So there's a reach there. So it's it's not you're not pushing the head up. It's almost like you have you have your hand up there and it's kind of pulling your head up. So you're leading rather than pushing. So there's there's no muscular tension in the neck by doing that. You're just extending. And so we keep an awareness of the balls of the feet and the crown of the head simultaneously. And just by doing that, just by that, holding those poles in opposition, dividing the attention like that, we begin the process of creating a super conscious state, body, mind, spirit integration. It's that simple. We also generate an energy flow just by holding those poles in opposition. Because the crown of your head is a very young pole. The balls of the feet, the feet are it's a very yin pole. So we act kind of like a, uh, like a battery. And there's energy flow happening there. And by reaching with the crown, tucking in the chin, we lengthen the neck and open up the space below the, uh, below the skull there and, and back the, the, uh, Occiput, the, the occipital ridge 
at the base of the skull and back. We open that. And so you're gonna feel some lengthening there as the muscles are being asked to do something which they don't ordinarily do. Ordinarily, they, they are asked to contract and lift your chin and, and tilt your head up. But we're saying we're gonna go the other way. And just to get that feeling of the, um, of the jade pillow gate opening that, just reach up and lift your chin. So notice how you're contracting the muscles at the back of your, your neck. Now reverse that and reach down with your chin, pivoting at the topmost vertebra. Feel the stretch there as you're, you do that. Now lift up and reach down, pivoting from the jade pillow gate. One more time, lift up, reach down. And come back to center and feel the nice, even, quiet space between those two, extent those two extremes. Relax your shoulders. Relax your lower back. Reach, relax your sacrum, allow that to drop. Reach out with your elbows. And by doing that, you unkink the hose of the shoulders. So we've unkinked the jade pillow gate. We've unkinked the shoulders by reaching out with the elbows. And the third major spot is at the quad, your hip joints. So push away from the earth and then relax, sink and spiral down and turn. And let's get that feeling of releasing, sinking down with the, uh, with the whole body. Instead getting sung, you're releasing down into the support of your legs. Point your index fingers. Feel them. And feel into your hands and feel the chi that's circulating there now. You're establishing a whole body energetic connection. Just feel that you have a sense of fullness throughout the whole body mind. Now feel the, the ball of the left foot and trace in your mind the liver chi as it rises up from the foot up through your body and then down the right side and down through the right foot. Just feeling that like a big oval. This is the path of the liver gallbladder energy. You want to also feel the connection between your navel and your genitals. Feel that, feel both those points from the inside, from inside your body. That establishes your center. And around this, we've got this big oval which feel it into your body and then also feel it expand around your body. So you're not limited to the energy 
just running through your meridians, but you're feeling it throughout the, throughout the whole system and into the radiant field that extends beyond your body. Now let that go. It's something you don't have to do. You, once you become aware of it, the body mind gets the feeling of it, then it takes care of it. The chi takes care of the, its own path at this point. You've established your preference. Now you say, okay, let that go. Let it do its thing. What I'd like to do is to now uh, go through two simple Tai Chi Tran moves. We're going to really simplify it for our, our purposes here. And I'm going to walk you through it and turn my body this way. Okay, so break foot's forward. Bring your right arm in front of your chest. So here we're going to establish our three pillars in this posture as well. You feel the balls of the feet, reach for the crown, open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin, reach for the elbows and open the shoulder joints. Push away from the earth and uh, spiral down and really feel Sun Kwa. Bring your right hand in front of your chest Your arm is curved. In your left hand, and then faces the right hand. So the palm faces the palm. Your weight's about 70% in your right leg. So to mobilize the chi, we've already established that we've got some chi going. We got a comfortable amount that's beyond the norm. And I'm gonna feel the ball of the right foot and set the right knee. So the right knee is not gonna move and turn slightly. And as you turn, you reach with both elbows very slightly and then reach out with your right hand. And feel that extension. Feel the connection for all the way from the fingertips through the body to the feet. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. So that's our, we're mobilizing the chi by feeling that. You're feeling the hands, feeling the crown of your head, feeling your feet. And now turn. Reaching out, feeling, but also consciously doing. Reaching out, feel your fingers, feel your shoulder joints opening. Reach with your elbows. Everything's very, very relaxed. And feel the chi coursing through your, through your arms, into your hands. Feel the chi connection with the earth. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. And release and spiral down to the left a little bit. So you're releasing into that left claw. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. So feel into that. So here we're, we're mobilizing the chi. Now we're going to do, first mobilize, then do. We turn, reach, 
with the left hand. We're just going back to the ward off posture again. So there's a gap between the hands. We're just gonna repeat that. Feel the ball of the left, set the left knee. Release, spiraling down to the right as you turn and feel your arms reaching out. Very, the least amount of effort that you can muster to adopt that shape. Check into your body, feel yourself reaching with the crown of your head, tucking in the chin, opening the jade pillow gate. Feel your weight, primarily in your right leg, but you're also connecting up through the back leg too, through your left leg. So now we're gonna feel the ball of the left foot and set the left knee and we're gonna start to spiral down to the right. So you're loading up that left quad. So you're sitting down at the left leg, spiraling down to the right and still reaching out with the hands. Feel this chi mobilization and turn. You'll notice the parts of the body that get tense when you do that. You may notice it in your back, in your shoulders, in your arms. And that's okay because you're bringing your awareness to the kinks in the hose. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left. You're sitting down that left leg and reaching up with the wrists. Feel that. Feel that potentiality that's building up in the in the, the body mind. Feel the chi that's that's looking for a way to express itself. And now we're going to feel the ball of the right foot, push the right knee forward, set that. Let's start to release down to the left. You're starting to load up that right claw. Mobilizing the chi and turn. Hands come down. Pivot on your right heel. And you're going to turn the other way. And we're going to do it on the left side now. Same idea. Motions are really soft. And this is where you start to notice where you're holding your tension. And it's a gradual process of untangling your connective tissue system because it's built up a lot of these little points of stagnation over the years. But just by nibbling away at it, we start to reorganize the body mind. So left elbow, left wrist, right hand faces the left. So now you're gonna feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left with the, with the claw. You're releasing down, you're sitting down and turning, reaching out with the left hand. Very soft, the least amount of effort you can imagine. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and spiral down to the left. And turn. Reaching with the hands. Relax and feel into that. Feel, feel the chi. Notice that it feels a little different on this side than it did on the other side. That's okay because that's, it's different. So now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Actually, no, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, sprawl down to the right, reach up with the wrists, 
So you're settling down into the right qua. You're loading up. You're mobilizing your chi. Feel that chi. And it's different. It's a, you know, you're feeling the yin chi mobilizing in the system. Feel the ball of the left foot. Push the left knee forward. Set that. Spiral down to, down to the right. So you're loading up that left leg, feeling support there. Mobilize the chi. Reach with your elbows. Reach with the crown. Be very patient with that, and just say, like, say, okay, I can. How much can I mobilize? It's like the archer pulling back the bowstring, waiting for that exact right moment to let go, and then turn. Reaching out with the left arm, curved in front of your chest. Reach with your left elbow, your right elbow. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left. Turn, reach. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral left. Mobilizing the chi. And turn, reaching. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, reach up with the hands. Mobilizing the chi. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Loading up, feel, reach with that, both elbows. The arms are relaxed. Notice how relaxed my wrists are. Nothing's happening there. This is very yin. This is the loading process. And then turn and reach. Feel first, then do. Feel the chi in your hands. Feel the energy throughout your body mind. Hands come down. Pivot. Step in. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, disappear the chi. Please have a seat. How'd that go? Can I just say that was intense? I was crying, Rick, and I know if I cry easily, that was fucking intense, and I apologize for my language. Or not. <laughs> intense in which way? You, you say you're, you're crying. What the, how, how did it Yeah, you? I didn't, I don't know where it came from, but I was, I was going through this and I was feeling the chi and I was feeling everything. I just started tearing up. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's, well, 
not for anyone watching, but yeah, it was pretty cool on my end. <laughs> it, it, it's authentic, you know. It, it, it's 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 uh, it's it's what it's 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 beautiful thing. Well, I'm not taken. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie. Well, first I want to say to Keith that if you're crying, Rick's doing a really good job. Okay, <laughs> things are moving. So, you know, if, if I ever teach something that's this, well, I'm not going to teach something quite this intense, but someday, um, and if people break down in tears, I've done my job. So <laughs> it's, a good thing. it's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come to Rick's class. He'll make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> laugh, laugh, cry. You know. um, something you had, and you, you mention this all the time, so it's nothing new, but something I've been focusing on just this last week is really feeling the hands relax. And I realize how much attention just holding the hands up versus just really relaxing them. Um, I'm really excited about that. It makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, so it was good. Yeah, if, if I may, just a, a note on that. You know, the idea of reaching with the wrist and allowing the hand to be very relaxed as you reach with the wrist makes a whole different energetic connection than if you reach with the hand, because there requires a certain amount of muscular tension in order to keep the hand out there. But you, if they, you're reaching with the wrist, the, it connects all things, and then you bring the hand into play as needed. Scott. Yeah, that was that was freaking awesome. Um, it was also it was, it was great and it was also slightly depressing to realize that oh wow there's a lot more I need to let go of but I definitely, <laughs> I definitely let go of a lot you know it was definitely I definitely felt a, a different different level of relaxed every which, time I do it it's the same I, I have that same realization Scott <laughs> this is freaking awesome well it's also I got a long way to go so, <laughs> but I, I'm hoping that I'm hoping those those two elements remain to the end of my days because mm. that's uh, you know like there's a, when it, there's more to go great you know <laughs> yay <laughs> there's, I have this is it <laughs> no there's more <laughs> wait there's more. <laughs> You used to have to run a couple miles to get that sort of exhilaration, Ricky Dog, and I'll see you in a fortnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Love you all. Love you guys. Happy birthday, Maria. We love you. Happy birthday, Maria. Thank you, guys.